shoppers, welcome to Cobb. Special today, French O'Malley's two for a dollar. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ain't it a pity when you're living in the city and I'm working in a grocery store? Take it out. Take it a dollar when the manager here. Ha ha, you're so lazy, you don't work here no more. Take it out. Take advantage yeah. of our special today, Cobb's toilet tissue, six roll pack, one whoa, whoa, whoa. With the tomatoes and the onions and potatoes, it's a struggle just to try to survive. Yeah. security camera covers all the checkout counters. That means you can sit in front of a TV monitor in your office and look at your employees all day long. What other channels can you get? Well, one camera covers the produce, one camera covers the meat. I was just doing a little joke. Oh, you were? <laughs> when was that? <laughs> Remember when I said about the other channels, I meant, like, could you get Fantasy Island or Love Boat? No, you can't get Fantasy Island. You get the produce, you get the meats, you get the... <laughs> Forget it. What are you doing? What are you doing? What? <laughs> I said, what are you doing? Nothing. I was drying my hair. We do that at home. OK, it is kind of slow in here today. <laughs> Pussycat. Not now, on your own time. Oh. And I'd appreciate it if you would get back to work. Certainly. And one more thing. From now on, when you come to work, try to get your hair fixed and your lipstick done. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Edna, don't you have anything more important to do? As a matter of fact, I do. Well, would you mind doing it? Certainly not. <laughs> well, Mr. Bannister, the system seems to work perfectly. Well, that's more than I can say for the help around here. Ah, got a minute, Mr. B. Not now, Alf. We're busy. Oh, sorry. Now, these three monitors will be on all... <laughs> this is Alf Scully, our security guard. He's been with Cobbs for 50 years. Really? Yes, sir. I started out with old man Cobb himself during the Depression. Not now, Alf. Yeah, in those days, we <laughs> delivered groceries with a horse and wagon. We've heard that, Alf. Yeah, it's hard to forget those days. Try. <laughs> <laughs> so, where do you want me to sit in here, Mr. B? Oh, I don't know, Alf. Just pull yourself up a chair and make... What do you mean, sit in here? Why would I want you sitting in my office? Well, I'm head of security. It stands to reason I ought to sit in here and watch the TV sets so I can see what's going on out in the store. <laughs> Could I see you outside a minute? Sure. <laughs> I want that equipment out of my office now. Right this minute, I want that equipment out. <laughs> Are you coming? Oh, you mean now? No, I mean a week from Tuesday. <laughs> What's on your mind? I want that equipment out of my office now, right this minute. I can't do that. Mrs. Cobb herself ordered the equipment installed. I don't care what Mrs. Cobb said. I am not going to have that man sitting in my office all day long. I don't care if the store is robbed a hundred times. It'll be worth it. But he won't be around. He'll be gone. Yes, I know he won't be around. <laughs> what do you mean he'll be gone? Well, this new system replaces guys like him. That's one of the reasons for installing it. But he's an old man. That's another reason. <laughs> but I can't do that to Alf. He's been with the store for 50 years. Why, he was with old man Cobb with the horse and the wagon. Really? What do you mean, really? You just heard him say it. Yeah, but I didn't pay any attention. I figured he was a nut. You thought he was a nut? Look, all I know, Mr. Bannister, is that when this system goes in, Guys like him, go out.
Howard Bannister's office. I'm not taking any calls. He's not taking any calls. Don't tell them that. Tell them I'm not here. Because he's not here. <laughs> well, who was it? I have no idea. <laughs> well, why didn't you ask? It could have been important. Then you should have taken the call. <laughs> Edna, what am I going to do? I can't fire Alf. He's an old man. Do you know what this is going to do to him? Well, it'll constipate him for sure. <laughs> That's not funny, Edna. No, not at his age. <laughs> it's not fair. He's a decent human being. Don't we place any value on character in this society today? Look at that man. That is a decent old man. Look at the way that he's talking to Murray. Why, he's like a father to that boy. Take it from me. Your first time should be with a mature woman. Someone who can show you the ropes, you know? I don't want to be tied up. That's kinky. Look, there's a lot of mature women who come in here looking for younger guys. Really? Sure. Listen, I'll tell you what. When I'm out there in the parking lot, chalking tires, and I see somebody who's right for you, I'll mark the back of their shoe. That way, when they come in, you can check them out and take your pick. Ah, oh, yeah, a great idea, Alf. If this works out, if, if I finally get lucky, I'll do anything in the world for you. Just try to get me lucky. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Christian, check approval on three, please. How much is it checked for? A hundred dollars. And the groceries? Twenty-six fifty. She'd like the balance in cash. No, oh, she would, huh? Can I see some identification, please? Could you turn, uh... <laughs> uh, it could be. I don't know. What do you think? I think it's her. You ever seen her before? In the synagogue. She's the rabbi's wife. <laughs> Shalom. Shlemiel. You're on my list. Do you have room? <laughs> We've got trouble, Christian. What's wrong? They want me to fire Alf. What? They can't ask you to do that. That's my job. <laughs> Why is it your job? I'm the assistant manager. You shouldn't be bothered with trivial things like that. Trivial? That man has worked for this store for 50 years. You want me to throw him out in the street? Why not? <laughs> Why not? Why not? Do you really want me to answer that question? It would help me get a grasp on it. How about in two seconds, I get a grasp on your juggler vein? Something I said? Try everything! Mr. Bannister. What is it? <laughs> to you that maybe Alf would like to quit working. Play some golf, do a little fishing, spend some time with his family. I never thought of that. After all, he's only a few years away from retirement anyway. Well, that's a good idea, Leslie. Alf might like to stop working. Now, that makes sense. I agree. Good. Now, can I fire him? <laughs> Christian, when are you due to go on vacation? Well, not for another two months, sir. Move it up. <laughs> Swimming, boating, surfing, riding the high waves, enjoying the sunset. These are the good things in life, Al. Now is the time to take advantage of them and to enjoy them. Oh, 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 it sure sounds wonderful, Mr. B. I just wish I could afford to retire. Well, why can't you, Alf? After all, you live with your daughter and your son-in-law, don't you? No, the whole family lives with me. I support them. You support them? Yes. My daughter's a school teacher, you see. They don't make much money, you know. Well, what about your son-in-law? What does he do? Oh, he's a big investment broker. He handles a lot of money for a lot of wealthy people. Well, what's wrong with that? He's in jail. <laughs> Any calls from the main office? No, nothing yet. I don't understand it, Edna. I just don't understand it. It's been 24 hours since I refused to fire Alf in direct defiance of Mrs. Cobb's orders. Now, she's not the type of woman to let something like that pass. She's here. Who? She's here. Who? Mrs. Cobb. Are you sure it's her? Absolutely. She got out of a Bentley, walked across the parking lot, kicked the pigeon, and entered the store. <laughs> Did you see Alf? No. Thank God. He must be asleep in back of one of the cars. <laughs> now, listen. This is a very strange woman, so don't leave me alone with her. What do you mean, strange? Well, try to picture how it used in drag. <laughs> Mr. Bannister! Make that Jackie Gleason. <laughs> Which of you is Howard Bannister? 
Good luck, H.P. I think I'll take my lunch break now, Howard. Who's abroad with the bleach blonde hair? Yeah. The broad, but, but that is my private secretary, Mrs. Cobb. She looks a lot like Eva Braun. <laughs> Eva Braun? You mean the woman who lived with Adolf Hitler? Yeah. I punched her out once in a ladies' room in Vienna. <laughs> I'm sure she had it coming to her. Uh, why don't you sit down and make yourself comfortable, Mrs. Cobb? Uh, now, this thing about Alf. You see, Alf is a you very... You don't mind old... if I smoke, do you? No, no, no. Go right ahead. <laughs> Castro sends these to me. We exchanged gifts every Christmas. He sends me a box of cigars, and I send him a tank. <laughs> Look, Mrs. Cobb, could we get to the point? Those are the very words I said to Sir Edmund Hillary back in 53 when we made the assault on Mount Everest. You were with Hillary when he climbed Mount Everest? Look, Bannister, I don't want that to get around. I told my husband I was in Palm Springs for the week with Gerald Ford. <laughs> uh, look, Mrs. Cobb, I know I was out of line when I refused to fire our old security guard. I hope it didn't upset you. Upset me? How about it blew me out of my pantyhose? <laughs> That's not a very pretty picture. <laughs> I, I apologize, Mrs. Cobb. All right, Mr. Bannister. Do you have any explanation for refusing to fire your security guard? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am, I do. Stuff it! <laughs> Either you fire your security guard or I fire the both of you. Have a cigar. I left word that I could be reached at this number. If there are any calls, just forward them to my Bentley. Castro. <whistles> Hello. No, she just left. It's perfectly all right. Don't mention it, Sir Edmund. <laughs> Mr. Bannister will be right with you. What's the problem? Uh, this lady has something she'd like to show you. It's hardly the time for those, Christian. I want your security guard fired. You too. Look what he did. Right here, the chalk mark. Oh, well, you didn't happen to be changing a tire out in the parking lot. I don't even own a car. Oh, well, I'll have to talk to him about that. Christian, take care of this lady. Certainly. Gee, I'm really sorry about that, Mr. B. It's all right, it's all right, Alf. Don't think about it, it's okay. Now, I spoke to Mrs. Cobb today, and there's something very important that I have to tell you. Oh? I'd invite him in. I want you to go home. Edna, I was sound asleep. That's why I want you to go home. You're no fun when you're asleep. I only want you to sleep over when you can't sleep. <laughs> Edna, I am a man who is under tremendous pressure. I have a lot of problems. How can you think of sex at a time like this? I'm not under any pressure. I don't have any problems. Fine. Go ahead. Have a good time. I'm going back to sleep. It amazes me that you can sleep, what with everything that's on your mind. The only thing that is on my mind is the fact that I had a fire, Alf. What about the fact that you're impotent? Yes, well, sometimes that's necessary. <laughs> impotent? I am not impotent. The only reason I went right to sleep is that when I have a problem, I like to sleep on it. And then in the morning... I have the solution. Well, do you have the solution? It is not morning. <laughs> Let me wait, Howard. OK. 
Okay, Edna, okay. If it's loving you want, it's loving you're gonna get. I am gonna make such wild, mad, passionate love to you that your neighbor is going to complain. You're gonna have to be awfully good, Howard. He's deaf. Well, I'll make love to you in closed caption. <laughs> ah! Oh! What happened? Oh! Oh! <laughs> Where the hell isn't this remote control on top of the television set where it belongs? Do you think you broke it? I don't know. I'm in a lot of pain. No, I mean the remote control unit. Who cares about that? That could be sent out to the store to be fixed. Okay, let's get on with this before I break something we need. I don't want to anymore. You don't want to anymore? You woke me up for nothing? Why not? Last night, you woke me up for nothing. <laughs> okay, Edna. Okay. I'm not gonna lie here and listen to your little sly innuendos. You have a choice. Either we make love, or you can call me a cat. Oh, I'm sorry, Howard. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong? I'm sorry, Edna. I'm just not in the mood. Where are you going? What are you doing over there by the window? Taxi! <laughs> hey, Jennifer. Can I ask you a question? Marie? I don't want to go out with you. I don't want to go to a movie with you. I don't want to sit in the back seat and neck with you. And I don't want to go to bed with you. Now, what's your question? Nothing now. Edna. Uh, Would you get me a cup of coffee, please? Certainly, Howard. Thank you. <laughs> Don't you stand up when a lady comes into a room. Oh, Mrs. Cobb. Uh, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't see you come in. Why don't you sit down and make yourself comfortable? I haven't got time. I'm on my way to a staff meeting. Yes. Well, you're certainly dressed for it. <laughs> That's a very handsome coach you have on there. Thank you. It was a gift from George Patton. General Patton? He didn't want to part with it till I slapped him around a little, then he gave it to me. Well, you've certainly had an interesting life, Mrs. Cobb. You've known a lot of famous men. There were only three men in my life that I was really crazy about. Edwin Hillary, George Patton, and Mel Brooks. <laughs> Mel Brooks? Mr. Bannister, there's something that I want. I think we're past the Mr. Bannister stage, don't you? What do your employees call you? Nothing I'd care to repeat. But you can call me Howard. What can I do for you, Mrs. Cobb? You can start by changing your name. I hate Howard. Really? Well, I'd like to oblige you, but that would entail throwing out a lot of cufflinks and towels. Not to mention my car door. Bannister, I want you to rehire your old security guard. Really? Why the change of heart? I received a phone call from an activist group threatening to blow this store up unless we rehired your old security guard. An activist group? That's terrible, Mrs. Cobb. I'll take care of that right away. What kind of an activist group? Some senior citizens group. I don't remember their name. Neither did they. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Senior citizens are all people. They're harmless. They're not violent. They're not, huh? You ever tried taking a shopping cart away from a little old lady? <laughs> Excuse me. Ah, ha, ha. Sure is good to be back on the job, Mr. B. Well, we would have had you back a lot sooner, Alf, if you had been on time. <laughs> I just want you to know that I'll be indebted to you for the rest of my life. I wish it could be longer, but... Alf, 
I can't take credit for you getting your job back. I had nothing to do with it. You didn't? No. Somebody phoned Mrs. Cobb and told her they were going to blow up the store with a bomb if you weren't put back on the payroll. Is that what happened? That's it. You know something? It is very big of you to level with me like this. I mean, it takes a special kind of man to do that. Well, thank you, Al. Well, I'm going to level with you. I was the one who made that phone call. <laughs> okay. Alf, let's make this our little secret, okay? You got it. 